Believers, in this video, I want to take the time to reflect on this issue of sexual minorities. Now, what is a sexual minority? A sexual minority is a group of people that have a different sexuality from the common population. Now, most of the time, this refers to homosexuality. But can also refer to people that don't have same-sex attractions, but they feel like they need to dress like the opposite sex, even though they don't really want to become the opposite sex. So, sexual minorities are a broad term for people that deviate from the natural sexual expectation. That's God's design. So, about sexual minorities, they are used by the world to promote sodomy. And you have believers, often believers with right-wing ideas. They should have been delivered from those right-wing ideas, but okay, you have believers who have these political ideas that should have been delivered from, but they have those political ideas in which they now oppose the promotion of sodomy. And I agree with that. And then you have believers who have left-wing ideas, which are all should, so should be delivered from, that are quite inclusive of sodomy. Which is wrong, absolutely. Even unbelievers can see that that's wrong. But here's the thing about the whole discussion that we haven't asked ourselves. And I'm not pretending as if I have figured it all out. That's why I made this video to reflect on this with you. The number one question that should have been asked about this LGBT movement is why does it exist to begin with? Let me, let me explain the question. In no way or shape or form am I saying that I am against LGBT people or people with a different sexuality than God's design. No. Nor do I condone nor promote violence against them. Absolutely not. What I'm saying is, if you have a group of people that needs to identify on their own flag as a nation, apart from the nation where they're from, that shows you that something with the primary nation went wrong. Let me explain. The LGBT has its own flag. Now, nobody can come up with an organization and come up with their own flag. Because you'll have authorities after you thinking, what are you planning to do? If you purchase a large plot of land and you develop your own flag, and you begin to hoard resources, financial resources, to promote this plot of land, people think, huh? Do you want to start your own country? What is that? You'll be, you'll be resisted. And now you have a group of people, they don't have their own base country. There are LGBT villages, I believe somewhere, but anyway, they hoard financial resources and they have their own flag and they operate as a nation. They have representatives, they have laws made in their favor worldwide. So they operate like a nation without a fiscal territory. Now think about this, believer. Let's take the United States, for example. If in the United States you would have homeless people, and all homeless people would move to the South, and they would develop their own flag and demand recognition for the new country, what do you think the world's response would be? The world's response would be, hold on a minute. How come all those homeless people need to unify under a new country if they are American citizens. That shows that the United States does not deal with their economy properly. And the United States is so in denial about their economy that now homeless people need to start their own country to get recognition. That's what people would do. Or let's say that you have a marriage. 
and the wife has to visit multiple psychologists to talk about her emotional issues, scars from her past. What any psychologist is going to ask then, hold on a minute, if you have to go to so many psychologists, then is it marriage you're in healthy to begin with? Or those friendships that you have cannot be those friendships are toxic. So the fact that you have that that the, that the wife has so many psychologists that she needs to go to is a symptom of something much deeper. And that's what I'm hinting to, to you here. The existence of the LGBT is a symptom that worldwide something is wrong with the human species. And I want to redirect this to believers. You know why? Because believers are the ones that have the power of God on the earth. That means that the world, they say that in garbage, can only run things with our collective consent. Now, there will be bad stuff happening till Christ returns, to get me wrong. We will not be able to, to eradicate evil from the earth, we won't. So there will be bad stuff happening, there will be violence till Christ returns. Nevertheless, we as believers, we should have a dominant impact to shut down violence wherever we seem it's necessary and whenever, wherever it's possible. That means that the moment we as believers don't walk in the power Christ has given to us, we enable violence on the earth, even if we are not violent ourselves. So, let me give another example. If you have 10 local churches in a city. But in the same city where there are 10 churches, which are filled every Sunday, there's an increase in drug traffic, uh, sex traffic, there's an increase in child abuse, in spousal abuse, there's an increase in suicides. What do you think atheists are going to say? They're going to say, hold on a minute, you have 10 big churches over there and very, very small churches. How come you have so many churches in this city? They claim to follow God himself. They claim to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yet, we don't sense nor see any fruit from that power. Even an atheist with no spiritual knowledge would realize, hold on a minute, if you are following God himself, there should be some power manifesting in your life that affects your environment. So how come you follow this God and things are only getting worse around here. Either that God of yours is non-existent or he's real but he doesn't care so he's malevolent or he is real and it's good indeed but something's wrong with you and you're the one faking as if you're following that God. Because if that God is true and you, you follow him then it cannot be that in your environment evil continues without being challenged. So where I'm heading in this video is the following. We as believers, we collectively should be able to deal with human sexuality. Why? Because human sexuality is God's design. He's the owner of human sexuality. He's the head of it. So we that serve God should be the monsters in it. When it comes to sexuality, we shouldn't have any shame, nor any embarrassment, nor any self-condemnation. We should embrace our sexual nature as God designed us to be. Why? Because it's God designed for life. And if there are deviations from God's blueprint, which will automatically lead to ruin, we should be able to deal with the ruin in a Christ-centered way so that most people who are sexually defective will find the help they need. What goes on now is that many sexually defective people, they find consolation or better said relief in the LGBT community. So now they become members of this nation without a physical territory because that's what the LGBT is, it's a nation without a physical territory, they become part of this nation 
in hope that they'll be accepted and their issues will be over. But here's the thing. The science reveals that their issues are not over. They still struggle with suicidal tendencies. They still struggle with a lot of mental illness. And they, a lot of them also suffer from domestic violence. Yes, there's a lot of domestic violence in the LGBT community. As well as a lot of drug addiction, alcoholism, work, alcoholics, you name it. So, the science reveals that that community does not work. But here's the thing, why does that community exist to begin with? Look, every human being is born in a community. So if someone turns out sexually defective, it has to do with the community. Somewhere, someone was neglectful and the community did not deal with it. Now, of course, when they are older, they have responsibility themselves to look for help. Absolutely. But that does not cancel out that the community neglected them. So, if such an individual ends up joining a cult to deal with their issues, it shows that the community has failed. And if this cult grows and victims are made because of this cult, then of course the cult is responsible for the harm that happens. But hold on a minute. That cult wouldn't even exist if the community took their collective responsibility seriously. Another example, which is not really related to this, think about crime. Crime doesn't just happen. If a part of the community is neglected financially and people end up doing criminal things just to survive, not to because they want to, and let's say that there are real bad guys take advantage of this, then ask yourself, how come those real bad guys had the opportunity to take advantage of the population? They only had the opportunity because a part of that population was neglected financially by the community and because of that in order to remain alive they had to resort to things they don't want to do and now you have this big problem now you have ghettos so who's responsible for those predators taking advantage of that population that, that part of the population the whole population is the whole population that neglected that part of themselves as a group they are responsible but in the world, they will only blame the people that have to survive. They'll blame the victims of the financial and economic violence instead of looking at themselves realizing we caused this by our narcissism as a group. The same thing you can say about the existence of the LGBT. I remember one time for one of my master degrees, I was at an excursion and it was at the mosque and we got a tour through the mosque. The tour, the guide had the same first name as I do, Rashid, so that was funny, at least to me and to others also. So it was, we had a good time and then at the end we could ask questions and it ended up being a one hour long discussion about homosexuality and how they deal with it in the Islamic community, in that part of the Netherlands. And it was this one fellow student that became so emotional because according to her and according to some other people, it was that the question was being diverted. Now, why am I talking about this? Because at the time I was thinking, come on! We are here on an excursion to learn how the Islamic community here deals with these challenges. Homosexuality may be one of them. And the tour guide or and the guide already explained that if someone feels that way, it's between them and God. They're not going to bother with it. So why do you keep asking questions? Why are you so emotional? I was a bit fed up, to be honest, uh, that that even happens. But later, I began to reflect on the situation and I was thinking, hold on a minute. I don't agree with supporting sodomy. Absolutely not. It goes against Christ. It goes against our human 
well-being in, in the long term. But what some of those fellow students were right about is the following. You cannot, and I'm not saying that this is what the Islam community in that part of the Netherlands was doing, but this is the impression they got. I'm not saying that impression is true, but okay. The impression they got was, was that the Islamic community in that part of the Netherlands did not want to deal with uh, homosexuality and they just pretend it's not there and they don't want to deal with the people that are afflicted by it. Now, if that's the case, then that's wrong. You deal with issues in your community by facing them the proper way. You don't deal with them by ignoring them or repressing them. And apart from the example I just gave of that tour to, to some mosque, I need to tell you believers, those that walk by faith, we cannot just ignore stuff that's going on in the world. While it's God that put us in the world to glorify Him. If God put us in the world to which we don't belong, for His glory, that means we ought to face the issues of the world in a Christ-centered manner. Does that mean that the world's going to embrace the solutions we, we will provide? No. But that's on them. Then they'll self-destruct. But at least we need to address them in a Christ-centered manner. And what I've noticed when it comes to human sexuality is that many believers are still afflicted by sexual shame. If you don't embrace God's blueprint of sexuality, if you don't embrace God's design of you as a sexual being, then you're actually saying you're embarrassed of Christ himself. You're ashamed of him. And there are many believers who are embarrassed of Christ. They don't dare to address sexual issues especially not in a Christ-centered way, because they're embarrassed. And my question is, what do you have to be embarrassed of, about? And because of this, sexual shame that many believers see as a type of virtue, we end up giving consent to sexual violence indirectly. And Satan is using this against us to blackmail us. We don't see it. The world does. The world sees this contradiction with us. I know LGBT people and they know my position that I'm for male and female. I don't hate people who have different behaviors, but for me it's male and female because I'm focused on what's good for the community. They know that about me and here's the thing. Most of them don't take offense because they can see I deal with the issues and I may not agree with them, but I recognize them. But just because I recognize them doesn't mean that I have to agree with them nor give in to them. And they understand this as adults. Now, some don't because they have other issues going on, but they, they can see I deal with it. And by you showing that you're dealing with it a proper way, people cannot accuse you of anything else anymore. What I see happening is that many believers don't want to deal with any of it. Yet, we have our judgments ready when victims occur. The world is seeing this a thing, hold on a minute. If you guys follow God himself, and God is the one who designed human sexuality, then why aren't you, as God's people, able to deal with the sexual problems of the world? If the people of the world don't want to comply with solutions, then that's their own problem if they self-destruct. Then we can't blame you for it. But why aren't you dealing with it? Why are you only protesting and sometimes even violating people who are sexually defective, but you don't actually walk in sexual health yourself? Why can't you properly explain the reason why sexuality exists and how we can use it to benefit our communities? All believers, especially those who have an inclination towards atheism, they will ask such skeptical questions. And they're correct in doing that. And what I see now is that many believers aren't able to shut them down because we often indirectly enable 
the sexual violence of demons on the human species. So, unlearn sexual shame, embrace your vulnerability, which is part of your sexual design, and glorify Christ based on how he designed you. That's it for now. Keep on being with Christ and be at peace.